released on July 29th of 2022 and followed up by the live album In Case I Die released this year on January 13th. In Case I Make It is, as of this moment, Will Wood's final album. Along with the announce, uh, announcement of the live album, In Case I Die, Will Wood said that he was going to step away from music for a while, taking an indefinite hiatus to focus on his personal life and to step away from his career as an artist. Wood, in an interview, said that In Case I Make It, also known as ICIMI, is sort of like a musical suicide note, sort of chronicling the end of his career uh, as he moves on to the next stage of his life. Let's go ahead and take a look at that note now in what will be a terrible music review of In Case I Make It. And then you do the intro. And that's the intro. <laughs> I see IMI, In Case I Make It, has 16 tracks, and for the most part, they are all sad as hell. Uh, there are a few exceptions, though, such as BFB, uh, whose full name I'm not going to say, because it's about four years long. Um, which is a bit more fun, kind of silly, a little, little fun. But for the most part, these are all really uh, sad songs. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Song number one on the album is Tomcat Disposables. Tomcat Disposables is the first track on the album, and it is sad. Uh, In Case I Make It is, is all about a lot of Will Wood's personal you know, struggles, his personal beliefs, uh, and also some silly fun things. Um, Tomcat Disposables could be a metaphor for like growing up and aging and you know being like trampled down by society and feeling like you don't fit in. Um, or it could be about feeling bad when mice die, which is very relatable if you ask me. I feel terrible every time a mouse dies. Um, Tomcat Disposables starts with this beautiful, beautiful guitar intro. And uh, you know there are some beautiful instrumentation choices here. The song really builds throughout. Um, the introduction of the flutes is amazing. I love that. When the flutes come in, you're like, oh, this is it. We're here, right? Um, another beautiful instrumentation choice I really like, right at the sort of climax of the song, uh, there is a moment when it's almost as if like a drumstick is dropped as the music sort of fades away. And it mimics this sound of like a mouse trap going off, because that's right when you know, our main character, the mouse, um, has just been poisoned, right? Is, is dying. Um, and it's this very sad moment. We've built up and up and up and up, and we have this sort of hopeful, revelatory moment of like, maybe this is going to work out. Maybe I can live alongside these humans. And then you die. You know, one of the big motifs in this song uh, that is repeated throughout the chorus is, do I belong in right and wrong nature, I guess? And it's sort of this, to me at least, this statement about the fact that we impose our beliefs of what is right, what is wrong, you know, moral decisions like that on our understanding, and we impose those on nature. Mice, they're just little guys that run around, right? They're not doing anything wrong to you. You are not right or necessarily even wrong. For, for killing a mouse that is in your house, but that mouse is just trying to live. You know, that mouse is just trying to sort of live its life as it goes along. It's a very beautiful song, very meaningful. Also, just, oh, it's so cute. So it's, it's a cute little song. We love it. Uh, it is not my favorite track on the album. It's not perfect. Uh, I do think it can get a little samey at times, and it doesn't necessarily build. Um, as much as I want to. It builds in a really nice way, but it doesn't build as full as I think it could. Uh, and for that reason, it's going to get a good score, but it's not going to get the best score. So Tomcat Disposables will get an 8.5 out of 10. Song number two on the album is, of course, uh, Becoming the Last Names. It starts with this very sort of rustic, romantic guitar. Um, a lot of the songs on this album uh, do start with a sort of guitar intro, uh, like Tomcat Disposables. We'll see it later with you know tunes like Cicada Days and uh, Vampire Reference. Um, this one is sad. It's a very sad one. To me, it reads as this sort of very sad surrender to social norms, right? You know, somebody who has been like fighting against 
becoming their parents, who has been fighting against growing up and settling down and sort of giving in to tradition. Um, and you know, like it's very much written from the perspective of Will Wood. This is a very Will Wood song. You know, Will is not asking you to put yourself into anyone else's shoes. He's just saying, this is me, right? This is something I'm dealing with. And it's really beautiful. It really is beautiful. Um, I don't love it. It's not my favorite song, right? You know, I think like pretty much all the build comes from Will's vocals. There's not a lot of change that happens in the instrumentation throughout the song. Um, but those vocals are beautiful. I mean, Will Wood is an amazing vocalist. Um, and, and Will is, you know, doing a great job of telling this sort of sad story of like, can I, given this life that I have lived, right, given this life of mischief and mayhem and whatnot, can I settle down and have this sort of traditional life, you know? Can I have a wife and a kid and, you know, have this sort of regular American ideal of a life? Maybe, maybe not. Um, either way, not something I'm looking for. Personally, I plan to never get married and die in a blaze of glory. So, not relatable, seven and a half out of 10. The third track on the album uh, is Cicada Days, which, mm, it's so good. The intro is atmospheric. We actually come in with these sort of like nature-y bug sounds. Um, and you have this great guitar. It's funky. Gang, it's a, little, it's a little funky. It's a funky song. I don't actually have all that much to say about Cicada Days other than Lyrically, it's very introspective, obviously, but musically, it is like you are on a cruise in Hawaii. You know, you're sort of like sitting out there, you hear the sounds of nature around you. You know, you're strumming away a little bit, a little thing on the ukulele, on the guitar, you know? That's Cicada Days, is it's a beautiful, fun, lighthearted uh, instrumental with a with lyrics that will destroy you. Well, at least they destroy me. There's really not much else that I have to say for Cicada Days. It's amazing, it's catchy. I think it's like the fourth most listened to song on this album. And there's a reason for that. It's a nine out of 10. Song number four on the album is Euthanasia. It starts out with this sort of like campfire horror vibe almost. It's like very, mysterious and spooky and in this sort of minor key sort of thing. And um, the more you listen to it, the more you're like, oh, this is about putting down a pet. And that's really sad. This is one of the saddest songs on this album. Um, you know, and it's all about not wanting to let go and the sort of irrationality around death. And it just wrecks me every time. Um, the gang vocals, the choir sort of thing that happens is really nice. Overall though, the song is good. It's, it's good, it's a good song, but it seems to just be sort of missing something. It has a certain, it's missing a certain je ne sais quoi, if you will, right? Like there's some sort of ephemeral quality that makes some Will Wood songs amazing, right? You know, um, thinking about like, you know, the last album, um, I Me, Myself, um, Suburbia Overture, right? They have this thing to them that makes them almost transcendentally fun and good, right? But Euthanasia is kind of missing that. It's not bad. It's, re it's definitely not bad. But it is missing something. And for that reason, I do have to give it uh, just an eight out of 10, which is still like a good score. It's like a B on a test. The fifth song on the album is Falling Up, and Falling Up feels like almost the most classically Will Wood song on the album. Um, it's got these very classic Will Wood dense vocals, you know, just like going at it. You know, like Will Wood does fast, almost somewhere between um, pop vocals and like stage vocals, like that sort of like theater musical style uh, in just a really fast way, does not better than almost anybody else. Um, Falling Up also just speaks to me really, like personally really a lot because it's all about sort of 
letting go, accepting that you are going to fail and die. But if you want to make it somewhere, if you want to do something, if you want to be big, if you want to be, if you want to have fun, you have to accept that and just go for it, right? You have to fall up. You almost, you know, it's sort of this idea of like failing into success sometimes or like succeeding temporarily and knowing that one day you're going to wipe out, right? Um, it's a very aspirational song and it's also just really fun. You know, it's got this nice, fun, up tempo thing. Uh, there's another bit of like gang vocals choir in there that I really like. You know, the piano going is super fun. But, you know, it's just a really fun, good overall song with a lot to it. And I think it does have that je ne sais quoi that Euthanasia, the track right before, was kind of missing. Um, so, for that reason, I'm going to give Falling Up a 9 out of 10. Song six on the album is That's Enough, Let's Get You Home. I don't have a lot to say about this one. It's a fairly good song. You know, it confronts a lot of toxic masculinity and defining your own masculinity, which is nice. Uh, it's not necessarily all super, you know, related to the themes of this album. It would be a lot more at home, I think, on the normal album. Um, but tonally, of course, this song very much fits within the sort of sonic structure of In Case I Make It. Um, where I, I don't think it would fit quite as well on the normal album. It's a good song, not the best on the album by far. Um, I'd have to give it a 7 out of 10, which is still a C. I mean, it's not bad. Song 7 on In Case I Make It is, um, it's kind of a lot, which is, at this point in time on the album, my favorite song so far. It's so good! I mean, there's this wonderful piano guitar intro. Um, you know, it's really confronting a lot of Will's like desire to be perfect and, you know, all of like his flaws and his desire to get better and all of these things. And it ends in just the perfect way. I'm not gonna spoil the ending of this song. You're just gonna have to go listen to it. It's such a good song, one of the best yet. For that reason, I'm going to give it a 9.5, 9.5 5 out of 10. Song number eight on this album is Half Decade Hangover. We're halfway there, gang. And this one has like this Billy Joel piano intro sort of thing. It's really bar music. Not like music you would actually listen to at a bar, but like music that makes you think of a bar. Uh, I'm just thinking of Piano Man, really. <laughs> Because Piano Man makes me think of a bar. I mean, the line, I was drunk when I made my bed, it, and like, tell you, like, now that you're sober, you have to lay in it. Like, I laid these tracks, you know, when I was an alcoholic, I, I did these things, now I have to deal with them. The song is such a great, it's, it's so good at it. Um, yeah, Half Decade Hangover, 8.5 out of 10, absolute banger. Next song. Vampire Reference in a minor key is the ninth song on this album, and it's so fun. It's probably the most fun song yet. It opens with this like sexy Spanish style guitar thing. It's like seductive in a fun way, <laughs> you know? It's not like necessarily like seductive in a sexy way. It's just like, ooh, you know? You can come and knock, you know? You know, Vampire Reference in a Minor Key, great song, great bones, great fundamentals. It really is, you know, it's it's a nice spot of levity among a lot of really sad songs. Um, <laughs> like I said, gang, this album is sad as hell. Um, Vampire Reference in a Minor Key, nine out of 10, great tune. Uh, song 10 on this album is the worst one yet. Okay, look. It's not bad, right? The song is, you liked this, parentheses, okay, computer. There's an exclamation point at the end. It's not a bad song. It's just not like fully a song. It's kind of weird. It's, it's mostly just a lot of like an AI voice reading stuff to you. Um, and it's like, you know, very much a criticism of what the internet does to people, what the internet does to culture, those sort of things. Um, and it does a good job of that. 
It's not welcome to the internet. And it also is kind of overstimulating. Um, it's kind of a lot. But it's, but it's not the That was a good one. Um, you liked this. OK, computer. Gets a 6 out of 10. Song number 11 on this album is by far the most popular song on the album. It's got another sort of very classically Will Wood sound. It's very upbeat, very fun, sort of punchy. Um, it's the main character. I think it's sitting at like 7 million listens on Spotify right now, which is crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of people. Um, the main character very much has this, you know, it's obviously very much a criticism of like narcissism. But the fact that it like puts it through the lens of like video games, right? Like I loot plot armor from NPCs, at least they are to me, right? It's like, oh, this is a perfect uh, description of what being a narcissist is, right? And it's super good. It's, it's such a fun, like satirical song. It is a bit one note. It kind of just does the one thing the whole time, you know, there's not a ton of development. It's not making as deep or philosophical of a point. So I would rate it lower. However, it is a very popular song. It's very fun. So I'm going to have to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Song number 12 on the album is by far, I mean by half a point, my favorite song on the album. It's Against the Kitchen Floor. Roll the clip! I'm gonna play the clip of uh, John Arbuckle from the Garfield cartoon dancing to this song. It's just gonna be in the background there. He's schmoovin'. Look at, look at him schmooze. Wow. You go, John. <laughs> Against the Kitchen Floor is funky. It's groovy. It brings the best parts of like all of this album together. It's obviously very introspective. It's um, about not feeling like you're worthy of love. Um, there's a line on here that is, I'm not a real person, just the shit you can't make up. And hoo boy gang, that one goes hard. Yeah, Against the Kitchen Floor, great tune, amazing. It's got the funk, it's got the introspection. I think it really is the thesis point of this album. It really brings together all of the points of this album and what this album is. Um, into one complete package. That's why it's our first 10 out of 10. Song 13 on this album, ooh, unlucky, ha. Ah. Song 13 on this album is uh, Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll. It was the first single released from this album. Rightfully so, it's really good. Um, and especially on an album that is sort of, you know, Will Wood's last message, last release of new songs to the public, um, it hits hard, right? It's very much about hating the sort of fame and celebrity that comes with being even like a moderately successful artist. And it's such, it's so beautifully written with this, you know, beautiful piano melody, um, Will's beautiful vocals on it as well. And the one thing that kind of drags this song down is the booze that cover the last little bit of the song. I get what you're going for. I get, and rhetorically it works, right? You know, on like a technical level, this makes sense. But it kind of doesn't work for me. It, it ruins a very beautiful song by having those booze there. But I also understand why they're there. That said, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. It's a good song. The next song, uh, song number 14 on the album, I'm just gonna call it BFB, because I don't have the mental bandwidth to say this. What a long title. If that title sounded nonsensical, wait till you hear the song. It's 47 seconds long. It comes right after kind of the low point of the album, like emotionally, of like you were down in the dumps the most after Sex, Drugs, Rock and Roll. And then you have BFB coming along, just going, uh, aren't I funny? And it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for me. Um, it's not a bad song. It's got some you know, promise. It's got a fun little jingle quality to it. 
I just don't think it fits here on the album or really on the album at all. Um, for that reason, I'm gonna have to give it a five out of 10, which is the lowest score so far. Song 15 on the album is Willard, which is such a fun song, is um, one of the more fun songs. Um, it's definitely Disney villain music, because Willard is all about um, relating more to animals than you do to humans and finding humans strange and weird and about almost like how we are caged by society. It's really good. It's very fun. It's an all around good song. In my opinion, one of the best songs on the album, I'd say it's probably like the third or fourth maybe best song on the album. Um, it's like right in there with that battle with like sex, drugs, rock and roll and half decade hangover. Um, I do think it's a little better than Half Decade Hangover because it does just feel more theatrical to me, which I really like. Um, I mean, particularly the ending of this song is very theater. Um, and as a former theater kid, uh, I really like that. Um, so Willard, or sorry, Willard is going to get a nine out of 10. This last song on the album is White Noise. White Noise is another one of the singles from this um, record. It's a great one. It's a really good song. Um, it's about the music you're not supposed to hear. There's a Tantacruel video, actually. Uh, click off this video. Go watch the Tantacruel video on corporate music. I'll just wait. No. Oh, actually, you know what? They can just pause the video. So yeah, pause this video. Go watch that video. All right, cool, you're back. So now that you have that context, uh, white noise is about that kind of music, and it is done in the style of that music, right? It's got that very like anesthetic uh, quality to it. It's very numbing. It's not super flashy. It's not super trying to do a lot, you know? It's meant to be there, um, and Will is sort of parodying that um, which is really where, you know, the fun part of this song comes in. You know, you get lines like, it's an aesthetic, I mean an anesthetic, which is just a fun little bit of wordplay. White Noise, of course, uh, great song, like I was saying, very much uh, that sort of neutral quality to it, really carried by the vocals. It is a little boring, but the vocals really help bring it up, so I'm gonna have to give it an 8.5 out of 10, because it's just an overall really solid, really good song. Viewer, if you've been paying attention, you know that that was the last song of the album. Um, doing our little fun fancy little calculations. Calculations done. Um, that leaves the album's score, if we just average all 16, brings it out to an 8.25 out of 10. It does feel a little bit lower than I want. And so I would have to say that because of the sort of musical cohesiveness of this album for the most part, and its statements, you know, and sort of those extra musical qualities like the cover art and the naming of the album, I think that bumps it up to about an 8.5. So In Case I Make It by Will Wood gets an 8.5 out of 10, which is the highest ever score I've ever given out for an album on terrible album reviews. That's what I'm calling it. I think I put that in the intro. It's called Terrible Album Reviews. Yeah. That's all. Make sure to uh, click the like button and the subscribe to catch our next videos. Uh, I'm not going to release any more, but you know, still click like and subscribe.